We know that South Africa has set aside the month of June as Youth Month. This is in celebration of the youth of 1976 who laid down their lives to fight against the apartheid system of oppression. The Deputy Minister of Social Development, Henrietta Bukhopani Zulu, was earlier today at the Faras Mangali Somkacho Secure Center where she interacted with young people who have been assisted by her department through its various programs. So one of these programs is their rehabilitation and the protection of children in conflict with the law. The Deputy Minister joins me now live in studio. She's in Johannesburg this afternoon, not in Parliament. Good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for coming through. Um, good afternoon, Palisa, and thank you very much for having us. Thank you so much indeed, DM. Now, your interaction really comes at a very significant time where we've seen a number of violent activities, violence in school, by young people, against young people as well. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a sad tale, um, we must be honest. It's a sad story for the nation. Mm -hmm. It's everybody, we must ask ourselves, what actually happened because as we speak children and even say children commit very very bad crimes mm -hmm. and children who commit crimes the ages are getting younger and younger mm -hmm. so we need to ask ourselves as a nation where have we gone wrong why is it that our children are becoming so violent and why is it that more and more children are being uh, sentenced to serve uh, in our secure facilities. Mm. What have we done wrong or where have we gone wrong, uh, Deputy Minister? As you say now, we're seeing young and young uh, school uh, going children uh, getting involved in these activities. Honestly, Palisa, I don't even want to pretend I can answer that question. But because I interact with children in conflict with the law, mm. we have 31 of these centers across the country. Some of them are over their uh, allowed capacity. We engage with the children, and children give us a lot of different reasons. Some, it's the PlayStation games that we as parents buy for our children, we buy our children very violent PlayStation games and the child gets to a point where they can't even make the difference between reality and play and they practice and do that which, which they have been doing in the PlayStations. And secondly, our, our television is very violent. There's too much violent uh, 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 programs. In, 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 in our, t in our uh, uh, television space. And also, we tend to glorify um, people who do wrong things. And as a result, the children or the young people want to identify. It's cool to be whoever, whatever. And then they, they, they end up acting out. So we need to, as a nation, begin to say, how is... You know, what happened to the village that used to raise the child? What happened to the family? And how do we define a family? Because when we engage with the children, they give us a whole long list of reasons why they are where they are. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have 31 centers across the country, I think on its own highlights uh, the problem that we're facing. But... Your mandate really is the department. Talk to us about that in terms of rehabilitating these um, um, young offenders uh, when they are uh, in your centers. The first thing that we do is obviously to assess. When the child arrives, we need to understand, does the child have a criminal mind, a criminal capacity? Were they conscious when they committed the crime? Because one of the reality also, Palisa, is that a lot of uh, criminal syndicates use children to commit the different crimes because they know that children don't go to prison, they are sentenced to social development. So we do the assessments and secondly, our child and youth care workers and our social workers in the centres would have individual programmes. So the intention firstly is to protect the child from themselves, secondly is to make sure that the child won't re-offend. Mm. Um, that thirdly is to make sure that the child continues to go to school. And thirdly is to make sure that whatever the time that the court might have sentenced the child in our care, sometimes the child gets sentenced, maybe let's say for 10 years and the child is 15. When the child turns 18, the child will, we have to move the child to a, a 
prison. Mm. So what we make sure is to make sure that we work with children so that even if they have to be transferred, that they arrive there as better human beings ready to contribute meaningfully. And we have a lot of a success rate. We need to say our social workers and child and youth care workers are doing exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. We have a high success rates of children who have been exposed in our facilities. Yeah. Um one of our sister programs here on the channel, The Full View, was live at a juvenile prison last night in, in Boxburg. Very heartbreaking stories coming out of the young people incarcerated there who regret their wrongdoing. And I think from what I picked up from that conversation is that they fear if they will be accepted when they are reintegrated back, back to their communities. How does your department ensure that despite the nature of the offences committed, young offenders still remain children in the eyes of the law? Firstly, we do, fem we do outreach programs. So one of the things that the department does is to actually actively identify children who are at risk of committing a crime. So that's one program that we do. Secondly, while the children are with us, we engage the families. And thirdly, we do what we call community reunification programs. So we don't just send out the child uh, when the child finishes their sentence. We need to make sure that the family is ready to receive that child back. We need to make sure that the stigma that that child was going to face is not going to face. Mm -hmm. So. All of that we do from day one when the child arrives at the center. So with the current state of affairs, DM, it looks like we're sitting on a ticking time bomb here because in 2018 and 19 financial year, the department assessed 23,918 child offenders, 10,515 of them were diverted and 3,039 were placed under home-based supervision. 132 of these children were under the age of 10. Surely this is a call for concern. And as many people have been saying that this is a societal problem that requires a societal approach to finding a solution to it, how do we address this, this challenge going forward? There's a lot we need to do. The other aspect we need to remember, Palesa, is that children have children. As much as we glorify it and call it teenage pregnancy or whatever fancy name we want to call it, we need to understand that children give birth to children. And therefore, as a child, there is a problem of parenting. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we're still dealing with the impact of HIV and AIDS, where ch older persons become parents a second time around. We're not out of that yet. So... Older, you know, our grandparents don't have the energy to be chasing, neither are they able to deal with the challenges that the children they must raise are dealing with now. We've killed the village. Mm. The village doesn't exist anymore. So for us to deal with this, we need to go find the village. We need to strengthen families because families, unless they are strong, we will never be able as a nation to get ourselves out of this particular situation. But yes, we have a problem as South Africa. Our children are committing crimes at a very young age. Our children are falling pregnant at a very young age. Our children, we, 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 we're not creating a space for children to be children. Mm. And there is some of the things that is mm. for the social development. Yeah. It's an area where we need to do 50 times more than what we are doing now. As it is. But we can't do it as a department alone. We need to go facilitate the village and get it back. We need to go strengthen the families. And those are some of the programs that we are doing. We had to introduce positive parenting programs because we realized that part of why children are becoming what they are becoming is because of lack of parenting. So we're rolling that out as some of the issues that we need to address, these very statistics that are so painful. Mm -hmm. we, are, we've, we have done the policy on families yeah. because now we have a directorate in the department across all three spheres of the department just to look into families because we've realized that without functional families, yeah. there's nothing that we are going to do. But we also have high prevalence of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. I always say 
when you look at statistics of children, you cannot separate them from gender-based violence. Because when those children watch their father punch their mother they every day, the right they think it's do. normal. Yeah. And they do it when they get to school because mm. they think that is what love means. So the day we begin to see the, the, the figures of gender-based violence coming down, all of these other figures of children killing each other of, will automatically come, come down, down. Okay. because all of these are linked. Okay. Time constraints, I'm afraid, Diane, but thank you so much for your time. Ralebo. Hello, Harun. All right. Uh, the Deputy Minister of the Department of Social Development, Henrietta Bokhopanezul, of course, talking to us about the programs that her department has in terms of addressing the issues of uh, violence amongst young people.